Blood, sweat, and respect. The first two you give, the last one you earn. Let's get out and earn it. Daily. Do you know how many people tweet, hustle, and work six hours a day? They say that nothing good happens in the 4 a.m. hour. Well, I can guarantee you this, it's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad. If you ever say to somebody else, why are you up so early? That is the quickest tell to you are not a winning player. Whatever it is, you're bold enough, you're big enough to dream if you are intentional and deliberate about it. Now there are some aspects of it that are going to be organic, but if you are intentional and deliberate, if you build it on Monday, if you build it on Tuesday, if you build it on Wednesday, I'm at, I want you to understand that it's not gonna happen by luck. Productivity is always intentional and deliberate. And on Tuesday, went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, set, no, no, no luck guys. Every single day, if you do a little, you're gonna wake up one day and your dreams are gonna be a reality. You can't just say you want it. You can't watch the video and say, I want it as bad as I want to breathe. It's cute to say it. But when it's showtime, when the sun comes up, when the sun comes up, you've got all the books, you've got all the tapes, you've got all the access. Now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you ready to hunt. Everybody's got lions on their profiles. Everybody talks positive about themselves. Everybody talks like you're a beast. You dress like you're a beast. You've got the cards like a beast. But then when it's time to do what bees do, you, you, you back up. Why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? The way that our minds are designed is our minds are designed to stop you at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. There are so many people in the world and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation and that's not true because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. The one thing we have in this world is we can't control the events, but we can choose what to focus on, we can choose what things mean, and we can choose what to do. Those three choices, those three decisions, really control our life. You can always make a decision that's always in your control. Staying with somebody that treats you like garbage is a decision. It is. Staying at a job that you hate is a decision. Staying in the body that you are not proud of is a decision. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not gonna be easy to change, it's simple. It's your job to push yourself. It's not the smartest people who achieve success. It's the people who procrastinate less, make fewer excuses, as they take actions every day towards the goals that they want to achieve. Uh, indecision is the thief of opportunity. Uh, indecision means the door is still closed. Uh, indecision means the opportunity waits. Uh, indecision means what could be is postponed or may never be. If you want to be successful in anything in life, Never leave the site of setting a goal without doing something that commits you to fulfillment. The next morning, the alarm goes off and um, I pretended NASA was there. It's the stupidest story. I literally went five, four, three, two, one. I counted out loud and then I stood up. 
And I, I'll never forget standing there in my bedroom. It was dark, it was cold, it was winter in Boston. Mm. And for the first time in three months, I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. There were moments all day long, all day long, just like that five second moment in bed where I knew knowledge, what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Your life is what you think it should be. That's exactly what you are right now. You are what you thought you should be. And if you don't like who you are, you got to change what you think you should be. What you think is more important than what you do. And so if you want to change, you got to work on this attitude bit. Decide, commit, act, succeed, repeat. The one thing that all the greats have in common is they sweat the small stuff. They pay very, very close attention to every detail. What makes you comfortable can ruin you. And what makes you uncomfortable is the only way to grow. What you are and what you become depends on how you use your time. The billionaire and the beggar both have 24 hours every day. The old and the young, the black and the white, the Indian and the Asian are all given the same amount of time every day. You cannot stop a day. You cannot stop an hour. But you can control how it will be used. Have you ever struggled to be more disciplined? You know you got that paper due next week, but you don't do anything all week even though you know it's coming. Or you set up a brand new habit that you're so excited about that you know can improve your life, your relationships, or your work, but you don't stick to it. Or you started that workout routine, and you got really pumped up, fired up into it, you, you lost a couple pounds, but then you know three weeks later, it was gone. And what did you blame? You blamed your discipline. I teach people that daily you have to prime yourself. You have to do something for 10 minutes minimum. If you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. Every day, selling myself, selling myself. I'm gonna write a New York Times best-selling book, okay? I'm gonna speak to tens of thousands of people. I'm gonna help millions of people on planet Earth. I'm, I'm literally reminding myself every day. When I wake up in the morning, I write my goals down. When I go to bed at night, I write my goals down. So first thing and the last thing I do every day, I've been doing that for 25 years. If you don't do that, if you get up and you just have no discipline whatsoever, you get no value of anything. Your diets don't work when you don't do them. Exercise doesn't work when you don't do them. But most of the people have some experiences that they want to shift. And once you shift those things, your whole life changes. But life is constant growth. My life isn't here because I went to one seminar one time and now my life is fit for life. I, I work out, I train my mind, I train my body. It becomes a lifestyle. Discipline is one of the most important things we can develop in our lives because without that ability to be sort of self-reliant and willful to get things done on a continual basis, we never get that great amount of momentum and progress towards what we really want. First time I wake up in the morning, I prime myself. That's what I've done for years. It's like I change my body with this radical breathing pattern or movement, but then I do it through 10 minutes, three and a half minutes of pure gratitude about three things. And the reason for gratitude is the two emotions that mess us up the most are fear and anger. And you can't be grateful and fearful simultaneously. They don't go together. And then I do three minutes of my three to thrive. What are three outcomes or results I'm really committed to and I see them as done and fulfilled? The first idea is to emotionally engage with that dream each morning of your life. See, a lot of people don't actually struggle with the discipline part in terms of the doing the thing. It's that they're not getting revved up to do the thing. In other words, we got a problem with motivation. 
not necessarily just discipline. Where does motivation stop and start? Everybody's got a different answer, but here's what I can tell you. It's really easy to be motivated. Either you've got it or you can watch it. It's really hard to execute. It is the variable that separates people. People are always gonna tell me every day. Every day I roll up on people, they're like, yo, I'm gonna buy the Seahawks and you're gonna buy the Jets. And I'm like, great, can't wait to see you. People are always telling me that they're gonna do this and that and this and that. And you know what I do? I ask lots of them to email me in 60 days, in 90 days, in a year. And you know how many do? Goose egg. People talk shit. And I don't know where it stops or starts, but I know that most of you, 99% of you, aren't gonna do anything about it, and that sucks. We have a problem with that once in a while, you, you hit it, you do it, you do the work. But a lot of times you fall off because you're not emotionally engaged in it. It's like, if you want a lot of discipline, you need a high level of emotional connection and focus on that thing that you want to work towards. So every morning, what I want you to do is just start a new visualization practice. When you wake up in the morning, close your eyes, think about the dream, the aspiration, the thing that you're really after in life, and just visualize it and really get yourself emotionally attached, emotionally engaged with it. Think about how great it will feel for you to have that thing or be that thing or contribute that thing to make that difference. Just think about it, allow it to well up in your heart a little bit, get excited about it, remember the dream. That's why we get away from discipline because we're so busy with the chaos of the world that we emotionally are no longer attached in a way that our brain says, hey man, focus on this. It's important to remember I think the people that have made those mistakes and that have went through those crazy changes are people that have put themselves in a position to not grow. So why go backwards? You're supposed to progress, you're not supposed to digress. The reason a lot of people don't have discipline in their life is they're letting their day be ruled by randomness. They don't have blocks of time that have actually been scheduled to do the thing they're supposed to do. So they're counting on sudden will. Oh, you know, I'll get to that today, or I'll get to that someday. And of course, someday turns into never, and then they start blaming their discipline. It's not their discipline, it's the lack of a calendar that says, do this now. So schedule what you must make happen, and you'll suddenly find yourself, wow, I'm, I'm so disciplined. You, you need to have scheduled blocks of time where that discipline happens every day, and that's the only thing that happens. Look, you can always do something every day towards your dreams. And if you believe that, it could be just some, something small. It could be doing a little bit of research, journaling, taking that action, creating that presentation, making that call, whatever it is for you. You can do something every day. Just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. You don't start because of what you don't have. You don't start because you don't realize yet that the fruit of everything good in life begins with a challenge. There's nothing easy in life worthwhile in life. Everything is a pill that's worthwhile. And, and, and there's, it's not going to come to you and it's not going to fall in your lap and it's not going to be something that, oh my gosh, I, it just was so simple. It's always going to be difficult. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. To grow you must suffer. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong, you did this wrong, or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays, because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't anymore, is people go, well, well, why do you run if you hate it? 
What are you talking about? I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, the, that's life, man. That, and and, and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. to fix this, I gotta read what the hell is wrong with David Goggins. Not, not blame anybody. Read my book, it's okay. I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb motherfucker. Okay, Roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. Tighten up, people. It's okay. Trust me. It's okay. You might be called nigger one day. It's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word. It's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. I like something Les Brown said once. He said, there are losers and there are people who haven't learned how to win. My question to you is this, which one are you? Are you a loser or are you still learning how to win? If you're a loser, it doesn't mean that you're less than. It could mean that you've gotten really good at quitting. It could mean that you've gotten really comfortable ending your race before the finish line. You have your reasons for not finishing, and I've had mine too. But right here, right now, the question is, do you want to win? Self-discipline separates people from success and not being successful. I've never met a person who was not successful that didn't have a great amount of self-discipline within their life. Self-discipline and being able to perform and being able to keep your life on schedule and being able to keep commitments and promises and meet deadlines is essential to success. Look, if you want to get rich, you want to be really successful. When I say rich, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about a rich life, freedom, time with family, choices, get to do what you want. See, this is what people do. They set a target. You remember when you were a kid and you set targets that were big, giant, had nothing to do with reason? They were giant, right? And then you had some difficulty getting to it and somebody said what? Dude, your goals are unrealistic. You need to drop your goals down and add 40 years and end up with nothing. Certainly not congruent with your potential. None of us can afford to have a life that is 
controlled by someone else or a life that is basically controlled by our emotions. I learned many years ago that there are two kinds of people. There's the type of person who says, I, I'm going to wait till I feel like it before I do it. And then there's a person who says, I've got to do it so that I feel like it. One will never get anything done because they're still waiting to feel the moment to move. And the other person says, no, I need to move. And then I will begin to feel the moment. Most people have strategies available, or they could get them, or you could create them, but the problem is you got a story. And your story is why it isn't working. And the story is, I've tried everything. If you tried everything, you'd be fit. If you tried everything, you'd be profitable. There's always a story. And what I tell people is, you know, if you can just divorce the story of your limitation and marry the truth of your unlimited capacity, then the whole game changes. Most of us in our life are trying to make a 10% improvement. And we know this. This is, I'm trying to increase my revenues by 10%. I'm trying to increase my sales by 10%, save 10% more. The lands out there, whatever it truly is, we all have this sort of beaten into us by life and by the rest of the universe that you can make these small incremental improvements. But the fact of the matter is that there are those in the world that go 10 times bigger. And you, every one of us can be that. I would say to you that it's your duty, your obligation, and your responsibility to fulfill your potential and that that's actually what success is. Success is not money. The simplest thing is get crazily hungry for something. We all know when you get so hungry, so desirous, your brain starts coming up with answers. And then it's massive action, but effective execution, which is all modeling, which is I assume what this is about. Find the best example, compress the time. Let someone else take 20 years to figure it out. You do it in two weeks or two months. Even if you have no idea how to solve it, no idea how to get there, you'll be amazed at what you come up with. And what's interesting is our legacy, our past, anchors us to where we are today. And you have to let go of that. You truly have to let go of all the stuff in your past, what you thought you'd done, the infrastructure that you built to let yourself go. We are not our feelings. We are not our patterns. Those are things we might identify with, but we're not that. And so when I see a pattern and it doesn't work, I don't think the person's broken. I don't think anybody's broken. I'm not here to fix people, but I am here to break up the patterns that don't work. I might be wrong in what I say, okay? I might be wrong in the things I do in my life and the business that I started. My family's told me not to start every business that I've been involved in, every one of them. Every one of them was a risk. Every one of them I had to take a chance. I remember my mom used to tell me, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I'm like, mom, you wouldn't do anything. Well, you wouldn't do anything except be the mother, a great mother to five children. My mother wasn't an entrepreneur. She didn't have my dreams. Just because she's my mom doesn't mean she dreams like me. Would you agree? Okay. My mom was wrong about everything she told me not to do. Love my mom to death. Okay. Unbelievable friend of mine. She was wrong. I needed to do those things. Okay. Steve Jobs needed to build this phone. Would you agree? Did he help a lot of people? Did he make some money while he was doing it? $119 billion in five years. Have the conversation with the person that's holding you back. The reason most people who are listening right now are not doing that thing is they're worried about the opinion of somebody, usually their mother, usually their father, and the reality is, is that your spouse may be the person holding you back and you have to have that conversation. We have to get to a place where you're doing you because the number one thing that scares the fuck out of me is regret. And you're gonna sit there at 72 and you're gonna say, I wish, I wish, I wish. It's, it's, it's looking yourself in the mirror and saying like, am I doing this right? So to me, there's so many people that are talking sh about how big of an entrepreneur they're gonna be and how much they're gonna achieve and they don't work on weekends. You know, I worked every Saturday of my 20s. Like, and I talk to 20 year old entrepreneurs every single day. Lately I've been saying to them, this Saturday, you're gonna have more time off than I've had in my entire 20s on a Saturday. So like before you tell me how you're gonna be bigger than me, start thinking about what you're actually doing. Ask yourself, Am I practicing self-discipline in my life? Am I doing the things that I should do because I need to do them or am I kind of waiting to feel the moment? Make a damn schedule and stick to it. 
It's not a bloody prison. That's the first thing that people do wrong. They say, well, I don't like to have, follow a schedule. It's like, well, what kind of schedule are you setting up? Well, I, sh I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this, you know, and then I just go play video games because who wants to do all these things that I have to do? It's like, wrong. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. You are what you consistently do. If you look at your calendar, you look at what you're doing on a daily, regular basis, that is what's going to determine your future path. So if you eat one chocolate bar, but the rest of your day is pretty healthy, you're going to be a healthy person. But if you're eating junk and more junk, and then pizza and then Burger King and more burgers and more junk afterwards, and then you eat one piece of broccoli, doesn't mean you're going to be healthy. Working out once won't make a big difference for you. Working out three times a week or working out every day, you'll see changes in your life. You are what you consistently do. Want to be in the game? Read. The average American reads one book a year. The top CEOs in America read five books a month, 60 plus books a year. But immerse yourself with books, audio, video, daily, okay? You hit all three of those where I'm reading something, listening to something, and watching something. These are completely different ways to learn. Find YouTube channels that are good for you. If you work your ass off, you're totally focused, you're trying to serve something larger than yourself, and you really are executing what works, you need a little grace. You might want to call it luck if you prefer um, God, the universe, but it's there. And we can all achieve. But I think the more important skill, if you ask me, is to have an extraordinary life is the art of fulfillment. And it's an art. It's not a science. Because there's a science to making money. I don't care who you are. If you do certain things, you're going to have too much financial stress. You do other things, you're going to have an abundance. There's a science. There's a science to your body. Everyone here is biochemically different, different genome, but there are certain fundamental patterns that if you and I follow them, you're going to have tons of energy and feel good. If you break them, you're going to pay the price and have low energy or disease. But fulfillment is an art. What's going to fulfill you is different than the other person next to you. You're not going to learn that from anybody else. And you got to find it because success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. You owe you an explanation. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? You need to put yourself on punishment. You need to tell you no more TV, no more snacks, no more desserts, no more, no, we working out now. No, no more alcohol, not right now. Not, no, I can't handle it right now. You need to tell you that you owe you something. You've never looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you let you down. Until you get to that point, you let you down. You've never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. What changed? I changed. And I stopped being a victim. I stopped saying, I've got to wait for good things to happen to me. And I said, I'm going to grind. I'm going to fight, I'm going to work, I'm going to press toward, I'm going to learn, I'm going to do everything in my power, every single day, I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. What do you want in your marriage? What do you want with your son and your daughter? What do you want in your health? What do you want financially? Like, how much money do you want to make a year? What do you want to drive? How do you want to live? Stop just waking up like an accident. What do you want? And then once you find out what you want, spend the rest of your natural life waking up and going after it. There is no excuse for not living up to the, your fullest potential. No excuse. I don't believe in the word procrastination. Like, I don't really believe in that word. I told a young lady in Australia who told me she was a procrastinator. I said, look, if I told you to meet me here tomorrow at 5 a.m. and I'm gonna give you $3 million, where would you be? She said, I'm gonna be right there at 4.59, ready to get that $3 million. And I said, so there is no such thing as procrastination. What it is, is it's not important to you, right? It's not, it's not meaningful to you. It's not, it's not something that's urgent to you. And when something is not urgent, you put it off. But if it's not meaningful to you, if it's not important to you, then you're not gonna make it a priority. So what you have to do is find out how can you make it meaningful? How can you make it purposeful? How can, how, how can you make it stick? And when you can find that out, I promise you, you'll get up early, you'll get there first, and you'll do whatever it takes to make that goal a reality. So for me, no such thing as 
Procrastination is a such thing as it's not a priority to you. 